Well, you know, my friends, West Cancer Center and Research Institute is leading the way with new non-invasive treatments for cancer patients. And Sims Murphy is one of the premier neurology practices in the country. They join me to talk about a wearable option, and I want to welcome Drs. Matthew Ballo, Manjara Pandey, and L. Madison Michael. You two gentlemen, welcome back. Dr. Pandey, Hi. welcome. First of all, I want to talk about what a glioblastoma is. Some of us have heard about it, but what is it exactly? So glioblastoma is the most common primary brain cancer. And the word primary, they're implying that it is cancer that starts within the brain. Mm -hmm. It is also, unfortunately, one of the most aggressive cancers with um, estimated one-year survival of less than 50% and five-year survival of about 6%. So how common is a glioblastoma. Thankfully, it is one of the rare tumors. Uh, it is uh, 2%. Um, brain cancers, primary brain cancers are 2% of all cancers, but of them, glioblastoma takes up more than half of the pie. So I said we have heard that name before, uh, Dr. Madison Michael. We've heard that because the late senators, John McCain, uh, Ted Kennedy, had that. And so with this new technology, how is it different from maybe the way they were treated? And I know you didn't treat them, but what is the difference? Well, traditional approach to these types of tumors was upfront surgery, and then we followed that with adjuvant radiation therapy and uh, chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And so those were kind of the three tools in our tool belt that we used to fight this cancer. Optune is a totally different technology that we've added to those three. Um, and one of the things that we've been very interested in is, is, is researching how effective it is when you add it to the other three. And we found out that it's incredibly effective at prolonging survival. So it's another tool in our tool belt, which in fighting this cancer, it's really essential to have as many of those uh, as we can have. And there was a patient that you all treated in April, Dr. Ballow, Miss right. Katie Stamps. First of all, when she came to you, what was her um, prognosis? I think the prognosis was guarded, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know we wanted to entertain all of the options. Uh, she wasn't ready to turn in the towel and yeah. or throw in the white towel, and neither were we. And so let's just take everyone through what this cap looks like. When you think of a wearable device, what does it look like? What does it do? Is there any type of stimulation in it or anything that you all can answer? Or you can take one at a time. You can just give us that information. Well, they're, they're pads, uh, electrodes that are um, a, a white pad that you wear on the side of your head, on the front, and on the back. And then you plug these pads into a portable lithium battery and the pads will uh, deliver an alternating electric frequency that you don't feel, mm -hmm. you, you don't hear, um, but it's interfering with the dividing cells. And how long will that patient have to wear it before you're able to see that the tumor is shrinking? So uh, that's a very good question. The, I just want to say the patients are required or asked to wear that device up to 18 hours in a given day and to use it um, continuously, meaning mm -hmm. um, on a daily basis. Um, before we can tell any response, we usually do imaging every three months or mm -hmm. so, but it can take longer for any visible response. Uh, there are even cases of some swelling before the tumor actually starts showing some shrinkage. Well, does this interfere wearing this cap? Will it interfere with their daily activities if they want to make a run and go to the store, if they want to drive and, you know, maybe do something for their summer? Does it interfere with that at all? That's a great question. Uh, when people uh, wear this uh, uh, device, it's hooked to a, a battery pack. So uh, everybody is able to see it. Uh, it does not limit their um, uh, activities on a daily basis, uh, but it, they do have to restrict um, their activities somewhat. Okay. Uh, if your head sweats a lot, then the pads will fall off and such like that. So and we low. are in Memphis where we have a lot of heat, uh, <laughs> and so that could be an issue. For, for sure. Okay. But when you look at the overall goal of trying to prolong survival with this type of tumor, uh, it's a very small sacrifice that these patients make. And this is a huge deal for not only West Clinic and Sims Murphy and all of the doctors who are part of this, but it is also huge for the city of Memphis and those patients who are being treated here and those who may come here as well. You may uh, put this out and then globally the world just, you know, ignites because it's right here in Memphis, one of two. How big do you think that is, Dr. Ballo? Uh, I mean, we think that this is a huge opportunity for um, patients diagnosed with this kind of cancer, mm -hmm. and hopefully in the future there'll be opportunities outside of glioblastoma. Yeah. 
Thank you all very much. Great job. And for the patients out there um, who will come to you and get treated, awesome. We have some awesome doctors right here. And I know that's a word we use all the time, but they're all awesome. We'll be right back.